good question. A question from chat from one of my lovely imps. Prosy Rosie asks, why are conservatives such weird sex pests? Now, obviously, not every conservative is a weird sex pest. That's obviously not true. There are tons of conservatives who aren't weird sex pests. However, sex pest behavior certainly is common and often encouraged in conservative spaces. And there's a couple of reasons for that that I'm going to try and answer as honestly as possible right now. I grew up in an incredibly conservative area, uh, in an incredibly conservative family, an incredibly conservative church. Some of you may know I grew up in a right-wing cult, um, which I, uh, I escaped around the age of 18 to 20 uh, in various steps. I have a whole video about it. You can go check that out. Um, uh, uh, it's called Demon Mama's Spiritual Deconstruction. I talk about it in great depth. In these spaces, there is a constant um, obsession with power. And that, in my opinion, is the root of this sort of sex pest behavior. The obsession with a hierarchical worldview, a worldview specifically where men are on top of everyone else and are supposed to be the leaders, the head of the family. They are supposed to be able to control their wives. Um, th these beliefs are integral to a lot of uh, conservative Christianity, which is the majority of conservative spaces. Uh, in the United States. The idea of, of a hierarchical world where the man is on top of everything and is supposed to command everything and control everyone uh, and the uh, it sort of leads to a, a, a whole bunch of other behaviors. It, it leads to an entitlement to women's bodies and women's minds. It leads to uh, violence when women do not obey uh, because obviously if you believe that God told you that men are supposed to be in charge and a woman isn't listening to you, well, how do you enforce that? Well, you enforce it with violence. Like for example, um, <laughs> It, it was legal for most of the history of the United States to, to, to beat your wife. There were laws saying, uh, specifically designating what you could, what tools you could use to beat your wife or daughter um, in the American law until very recently. That is a very recent change that these laws have started to be taken off the books. Um, the idea of a world where women are controlled and men are entitled to control women by God, they are given the right by God, leads downstream to an incredibly, uh, to, to basically spaces that do not respect consent, to spaces that do not respect the individuality of women, that do not respect the personhood of women, that do not respect the personhood of anyone who is even womanly, which is also why you, you get a whole bunch of abuse towards feminine men, you get a whole bunch of abuse towards gay men, you get a bunch of abuse towards men who, are otherwise masculine, but perhaps have a feminine a feminine trait. Um, all of these things are downstream from a culture that tells you that God has given you the right to command, uh, that God has put you in hierarchy over another person. The right wing is the conservative side of 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 politics. Um, is they assert a belief in a hierarchical world. Um, not a world of just coincidental hierarchies, not a world where a hierarchy is the result of decisions, but a world where the hierarchy is commanded and designed by a, a all-powerful God, that it is endorsed. They believe that hierarchies are a good thing. When most of us would acknowledge that most hierarchies are the result of someone having power over another, like for example, uh, some uh, a business owner owns a bunch of stuff and so they have money and they can do things because they have that money. Uh, there's not like a, you know, that's uh, most people who aren't conservatives would look at that and go, hey, that's something that's occurring in the world but that doesn't necessarily make it right. A conservative looks at that and goes, God has designed this to be the way that it's supposed to be. A owner is supposed to, is supposed to, they are correct to own others. A father is correct to own uh, his children and his wife. Um, and, uh, and 
The result of that is, of course, like I said, an entitlement to women's bodies, a refusal to acknowledge the personhood of women um, on so many levels. And in some places, it's more, it gets extremely explicit. I mean, you have, uh, you know, extreme religious sects, even the cult that I grew up in, that are very explicit about, um, you know, the subjugation of women, where they just say, no, women are lesser than men. God created you, but you are not as good as men. You are not a complete human like a man is, um, is what they would say. And then, of course, there are the lesser versions where it just seeps in passively, um, like the way that it seeped into law. Because, of course, not every, you know, not every Christian president has been an extremist Christian president, but their views nonetheless carry a lot of these assumptions about the world with them. And, um, of course, there's a there's a further version of this. This this gets even more complicated when you talk about like what we were just talking about a few minutes ago. Um, I'm I'm gonna play this clip again for for relevance. We were just sent a clip of a Christian nationalist uh, and self-avowed fascist Nick Fuentes. Uh, many people are familiar with Nick Fuentes, and uh, we're going to watch a bit of this clip real quick. It's a clip from Nick Fuentes' show in which he admits that he wants a 16-year-old wife. And I'll just let him speak for himself. No, bitch. I want to drink it straight from the tap. I want it raw. I don't want to wait a moment. Right when the milk is good, I want to start drinking the milk. Same thing goes with women. I don't want to turn 30 and find some 20-year-old, 20 29-year-old woman that I have something in common with, and it's like... Hey, properly aged, like wine. Women don't age like wine, they age like milk. They don't age like wine. That's not how their hormones work. That's not how they work. Yeah, I gotta find, I gotta find my 16 year old wife. Probably when I turn 30 or something. Cause here's the thing, I don't wanna be like, let's say I get married to a 18 year old now. Six year age difference. When I turn 40, she's going to be 34. Ew. Well, if I'm 30 and she's 16, 14 year age difference. When I'm 50, she'll be 36. When I'm when I'm 40, she'll be 26. Then now we're talking here. Now we're cooking with gas. Now you can see a, an alternative vision for how how things could be. I want a 16 year old is untouched, untouched, pristine. So there you have it. Uh, from from the mouth of the iconic Christian nationalist uh, 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 advocate, uh, uh, Nick Fuentes. Um, this is an incredibly common viewpoint in far right spaces. Um, and like I said, um, if you listen to what he's saying, there's a whole lot of, he has all kinds of little explanations for it, but if you boil down what he's looking for, he's looking for, uh, he's fetishizing youth. He's fetishizing purity. He's fetishizing a power imbalance. He specifically talks about wanting to be 30 himself and aim at a, a child is what he's aiming for. And of course, the obvious, uh, the obvious uh, analysis there is that well, if you're 30 years old and you're established and you fet you're fetishizing this youth, you're also fetishizing the power imbalance that you have over that person. You're fetishizing the ability to control that person's life, the fact that that person isn't on your level. He explicitly says that. He says, I don't want somebody 29 who's my age and a complete person. He's looking for somebody who he can manipulate and control, that he can have power over. It's incredibly disgusting, incredibly abusive and 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 twisted behavior that is inc that is encouraged all across conservative spaces. It's something that was unbelievably common in the church that I grew up in. There was this uh trend in the cult that I grew up in of um women getting married the moment they turned 18, usually to a guy who was older than older than them by a decent margin. Um, not always, but very often. And usually they would get pregnant almost immediately, which put them in a position of physical uh, dependence on another person, which put them on a position of legal dependence on another person, which put them in a position of social dependence on somebody else, and of course, uh, financial. So you have a, you have young women being taught their whole lives 
uh, that their job is to get married as soon as possible or else they're a failure. And then you have a bunch of men waiting to scoop up young women and immediately get them under their control. And all of this stems from the idea that men in these conservative spaces believe that they are entitled by God to a position of power and ownership over women. So I hope that that answers the question as to why sex pest behavior is so common uh, in conservative spaces and why it's such a huge problem and also why um, there's such a tendency in conservative spaces towards this sort of a uh, very thinly veiled pedophilia, which is what it is. Uh, it is extremely thinly veiled pedophilia. They are targeting extremely young women. They are looking, and let me tell you, it goes worse than this, okay? There is a, um, people talk about purity balls and things like that. Purity balls are father-daughter dances where the daughter gets all prettied up and then they go to an event um, with their dad who is protecting them and who uh, encourages them to give themselves to God. But another thing, um, you might notice that there's a very is a very weird atmosphere there where uh, peers that are men are excluded from that space and young women are explicitly brought into a space with a whole bunch of older men. Now they're there with their dads, but that's not who they're, they're not just socializing with their dad. And also in being brought there by their dad, there is a symbolic ownership that, hey, you're not, you're not to be belong to these other men your age. You're to be guided and controlled and taken care of. And your future is to be decided by all of these older men in the room. Yeah, many, some of you in my audience may have even gone to such things like a purity ball when you were younger. Um, you may have had your fathers take you to that sort of thing. Um, purity balls are incredibly, incredibly weird. They're, uh, uh, a, there, there is so much uncomfortable dynamics going on on these things, but they're sold as sort of like chaste, but they're anything but that. It is specifically gathering a bunch of young women, most of whom um, have just started puberty or are somewhere in the middle of puberty in a single place in the presence of a bunch of older men, all of whom have a God-given sense of ownership over these young women. It is the definition of a culture of grooming. It is a culture by which they make it regular that you are supposed to be surrounded by, obey, and be told what to do by older men. You are not supposed to be able to associate with people your age. You are not supposed to be able to meet people your age. These, all of these things are incredibly common in far right and, and conservative spaces. So again, not all conservatives are sex pests, obviously, but there is a culture of uh, objectification. There is a culture of disregard for consent. There is a culture of possessiveness, and there is a culture of the fetishization of power imbalance in the f with the power f imbalance favoring the man, older men, and the power imbalance disfavoring young women who are often the victims of these things. Is there anything that can be done about this on a communal level? Yes. Um, well, there's a lot that can be done about this. First of all, sex education is incredibly, incredibly valuable. Uh, teaching uh, women and girls that they are their own independent person, that their body is theirs and not anyone else, uh, uh, not anyone else's, is incredibly, incredibly valuable to resisting this sort of thing. Um, uh, uh, which, by the way, that has two effects because first of all, it is it is more likely to give uh, young girls the ability to resist this type of shit, but also it means that there are likely to be less women who find themselves in these situations in the first place. Because keep in mind, in a lot of cases, there is a mother who has bought into this uh, this worldview that is also assisting the father in in uh, in in encouraging this type of culture to perpetuate itself. Um, and uh, and uh, uh, there is um, another thing, of course, is propagating the idea that consent matters, which seems so obvious to a lot of you. A lot of you who listen to my content, who listen to my show, are going to, um, 
are, are going to, 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 to be like, well, obviously consent matters. But um, in conservative spaces, I can tell you from firsthand experience, consent is not valued. Consent is not considered like, it, it, it's, it's so hard for me to communicate this to people who didn't grow up conservative because most people who grow up like as liberals understand that, hey, like consent generally is important. Like you shouldn't do things to other people that they don't want. But in conservative spaces, this is just never discussed. Consent is simply not a thing that people talk about. It's not, there's no stress put on it. It's not taught about outside of sex or inside of sex. They just don't believe that consent is a value. And I think that that's pretty horrible and it is unfortunately very common especially in uh evangelical spaces where they actually will sometimes we we watched this actually once we watched a, a clip of rush limbaugh who is now dead but at one point was the most popular right-wing uh radio show in the entire world in fact the most popular single radio show in the entire world was rush limbaugh and rush limbaugh used to do a segment that he did multiple times where he mocked the idea of consent being valuable he actually explicitly advocated against valuing consent that consent just isn't something you should care about it's very very disgusting it again leads to a dehumanization and objectific objectification of uh mostly mostly women and feminine people in these spaces um Oh yeah, another example, people are bringing up Matt Walsh. Uh, Matt Walsh and that infamous clip where he says, I violate my kid's consent all the time. He did an entire video uh, mocking the idea that consent matters uh, specifically for kids. Even though teaching kids consent is incredibly important. Kids should not be touched against their will. Kids should not be um, forced to do things that they're not comfortable with. And you'd think that would be an easy thing to understand, but that's not the way that uh, a lot of these spaces operate. So um, it's a huge problem. There is a lot that can be done against it. It is a cultural issue that has to be tackled. It has to be tackled by encouraging uh, uh, consent, uh, encouraging teaching people about consent, teaching the value of consent, uh, teaching people good sex education, teaching people that they have a right to their own bodies. Um, and it also uh, involves pushing back very hard on institutions that encourage the opposite. Uh, institutions that tell you that these things don't matter. Institutions that tell you that women don't have uh, a right or that don't are or that uh, or teach you that women should be objectified these things should be pushed back on and I mean this even for Christians because obviously there are a lot of Christians who do value consent there's a ton of them um, but Christians are going to have to struggle within their own religious communities to discourage the type of Christianity that in that uh, dehumanizes women that puts women uh, explicitly below men uh, it has to be pushed against even by other Christians so of course Matt Walsh also defended child marriage well yes because if you if you follow what we've been talking about here it's a logical conclusion for conservatives to believe in child marriage they believe that it's okay for a father to give away their daughter whenever I mean child marriage is present in the Bible and they will cite that gladly they'll say oh this happened in the Bible God approves of this sort of thing and of course um, there are Christian arguments even against that. Many people will acknowledge that, of course, culture itself has changed in great ways. It's not a matter uh, that God, you know, doesn't endorse child marriage, but that, uh, you know, uh, or, or, you know, that didn't just because something happened at one point in the Bible doesn't mean that it was endorsed by God or that it was a good thing. And that as society has changed, people have realized that child marriage isn't a good thing. So see, there's arguments that can be made even within the framework of Christianity. But... Unfortunately, because of the way things are, there are a lot of manipulative ways that con Christians will push this idea of child marriage. Um, yes, as Killjoy points out, it's also very important to push back on laws that, pr that protect under 18 marriage, um, which is a huge issue. There are still states in the United States that have laws that allow under 18 marriage and that allow uh, the marriage of adults to children because as long as it's a marriage they don't even there are states that would consider that statutory rape um 
but then if it's if it's if it's ordained by a church then all of a sudden it's okay these things have to be combated and they have to be combated very hard um the conservative worldview uh unfortunately a worldview that asserts hierarchy, that asserts uh, uh, men over women, that asserts the ownership of women by men is one that is naturally going to produce horrific outcomes. It is going to logically produce uh, worldviews like this. So I believe, and that's part of the reason why I advocate the way that I do, and I have the beliefs that I, I hold, um, that we should reject this type of hierarchical worldview, that we should be highly critical of the hierarchies that exist in the world, that we should um, recognize that these things uh, aren't natural or ordained by God, but they are often circumstance. Um, they, are, they are exploited. They are circumstances that are exploited to gain power over others. We should be critical of those things, push back on them severely. Uh, yeah, some people are pointing out that literally uh, just yesterday, um, the Michigan, the Michigan governor signed a law that that bans child marriage. The minimum age of marriage was eight, raised to 18 in Michigan. Previously, um, 16 and 17 year olds were allowed to get married as long as they had parental permission, which means that there was functionally still arranged underage child marriages going on in Michigan until literally yesterday that this law was signed. Yesterday meaning this was recorded on uh, July 12th, 2023. So, yeah, it took until July 12th, 2023 for Michigan to get rid of an underage child marriage law. Pretty deranged. Anyway, that's all I have to say on this particular subject. If you found this interesting and valuable, I talk about these type of subjects a lot. I tend to have very uh, real conversations about religion, about uh, politics, about... Um, the heinous activities that are encouraged by the current American conservative movement. If you find that interesting, please press subscribe right below and make sure that you share your, your opinions down below. Let me know what you think on this subject. If you've had experiences about it, tell people down below because a lot of people spend time in the comments and can learn a lot from it. So thank you very much.